This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is the morning after edition of Decision 2012 on City Talk. It's over! Finally. <laughs> Thank God. But it's really just <laughs> begun. Winning the 2012 election may be the easy part. Now Barack Obama has to govern. The question is, let the Republican self-destruction begin. <laughs> Maybe even over a pot of tea. Joining me to discuss the 2012 presidential election, the campaign, the results, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow for the next four years of tomorrows, are some bleary-eyed colleagues from Baruch <laughs> College's School of Public Affairs, Dean David Birdsell, Professor Hector Cordero Guzman, yes, and the head of Baruch College Survey Research, Mickey Blum. Welcome, folks. Good to be here. Here Great we are, here. the morning after... 303 electoral votes for Barack Obama with 29 still outstanding in Florida. Looks like if you look at the numbers, he's going to take Florida, 332, 206. Initial reactions, Hector. I think uh, it was called a demographic shellacking yesterday. I think this is the first election where uh, um, the Republican Party, uh, it was shown that the Republican Party cannot win without a broader coalition. In other words, they cannot win with whites only. Uh, from now on, I think uh, any winning formula is going to have to include a solid coalition of Latino and African American voters. We'll come back and ask how that's how they might be able to do that, <laughs> Mickey. I, I will completely agree with this. You cannot have a party that's made up of old old white men. That 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 is not a future for a party. On the other <laughs> right, and the other thing that I that really strikes me is that for all the abuse that pollsters got. The polls were right, right down the line. They really got it spot on across the country, state by state, and nationally. Even the, the you know, the, the spurn, scorn, Nate Silver. Right, Nate Silver, <laughs> Nate Silver, you know, and, and, and all, all the abuse that he took for, for, for saying that he knew that Obama would win and that it would be more than 300 um, electoral votes. And even right. pollsters who took and, much abuse. And the abuse. pollsters took a tremendous amount of abuse and everybody saying that their models was, were wrong and they were, they, you know, that their polls were all skewed and their response rates were down and all the rest of it. They were right on state by state. David. I think Hector and Mickey have it exactly right. Um, what we've seen is the beginning of a trend, or at least the culmination of a trend for this moment, uh, propelling a president in, back into office. Um, but this is, you know, we're looking out at uh, the way that this trajectory rolls in a number of years, and right now we have a very, very narrowly divided electorate. Uh, and those white men are angry, and many of them are in the Congress, and it's going to be extremely hard to govern uh, over the course of at least these next two and probably these next four years. Uh, so questions of mandate, uh, I think, would be reasonable to mm -hmm. talk about. Does Obama have one? Mm -hmm. um, I would argue that he does, and he can make a plausible claim, at least in narrow areas of uh, uh, policy specifics and in broad areas of policy trends uh, for changing the tax code back to something like what it resembled in the Clinton administration uh, for trying to use government as a lever of social change and public benefit. Okay, let, let, let me follow up U.S. After spending $6 billion in the total election cycle and more than a billion dollars for the presidential election, where we're, we're, we're at, where we've been over the last four years, we have Barack Obama president, right. we have the Democrats controlling the Senate, and we have Republicans controlling the House. Now, to go to David's point about mandate, mm -hmm. does uh, the, you know, the, the, the current and future head of the Budget Committee, Paul Ryan and Paul Cantor, et cetera, do they care about mandate? Does mandate mean anything? Do they have an incentive or an imperative to compromise? David? Well, I mean, I think, I think, I think uh, you can look at mandate in, in three different ways. Go ahead. One first in terms of the House. 
how hard or easy was it for the house to turn over. It was very difficult for the house to turn over, and it didn't. So if, if you look at the house, you don't conclude that there's a big mandate. But let's look at the Senate and the popular electoral vote. Uh, popular electoral vote. In the Senate, the Democrats won bigger than perhaps expected by many. Mm. Uh, and over the last two cycles, I think Republicans have lost a, num lost a number of seats. Four or five. Where, 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 where all expectations were that they could have taken them. Well, I mean, they nominated uh, fools they, as they, candidates. They, I mean, the Tea Party <laughs> killed the Republican That's Party right. with Murdoch, Aiken. Come on. And third, in terms of the, the, the electoral vote, uh, it's a healthy less than last time, but mm -hmm. it's still a healthy over 300. Mm -hmm. And the popular vote, I think, is of a president's ahead by over a million votes. Right. It As would have been match. much harder to claim a mandate had there been a difference between That's the right. electoral oh. and the popular vote. I, I, oh, I, I think so, it would have been really bad uh, for the country, frankly, because I think that this year there because I think, particularly with Barack Obama, there has been so much of this sort of feeling of, uh, you know, you're not a legitimate president or all the absurdity that, that was around. The re-election is not a they, Kenyan right, president. Our Kenyan president. That I think it just would have added to that. And, and, it, and the country is divided, so it, I think it just would have made it more divided. It, it is wonderful, even if it's literally by 1%, that, you know, it, the, you know, getting the popular vote matters. Where's the give? David, you talked about some potential opportunities for quote-unquote bipartisanship or some movement? It's entirely unclear at this point how you get movement in the House, how you get Eric Cantor, how you get John Boehner to uh, marshal their troops to vote differently than they have in the course of these last two years. Um, however, if you look at some of the exit poll results, I think we see some, uh, some points of opportunity that not only did people reelect Barack Obama, not only did they uh, defeat uh, Todd Akin and Murdoch and some of the other uh, uh, Senate candidates, um, they also said that the pivot point in the economy was the Bush administration, not the right. Obama administration, to Bush's disadvantage and uh, Obama's advantage. Um, they also said that they see a stronger role for government in the lives of common citizens, uh, trying to relieve economic uh, uh, privation and anxiety. In other words, there are some basic issues that were actually campaigned on. And this is important because an election should deliver a mandate. It can't do that if a candidate isn't articulate about what he wants to see happen. Mm -hmm. And Barack Obama was in these broad stroke ways. Lots of us were frustrated that he wasn't more specific, mm -hmm. uh, but he was specific about these things. Now, last point. Um, we were talking a few minutes ago about how Republicans begin to think about reshaping a party that can actually win in the out years. And they see this, they've been talking about it, uh, and, and this was the reality mm -hmm. that hit them square in the face uh, last night. Um, these are issues they have to grapple with on the ground, in the House. That's the side of the battle, and that's where the Republican Party remains. We're talking about... Wait, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. I was going to say, yeah, this is, uh, to me, the, the big number that I was looking for at, all, all yesterday was the percentage of the vote that was going to be white. Yes. Because I think this is what we're seeing mm -hmm. year after year after, you know, presidential race after presidential race. It was 72 percent white. Um, this year, the electorate in, in 08, it was 74% white. In 04, it was 77% white. It's going down. There, the reality of this country is that the, you know, the, the majority white is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and you really cannot govern or, and you cannot expect to win if that, if your party is, is really, you know, 99% white. So here's the opportunity. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, uh, the census released a report uh, sometime this year that showed that a majority of births in this country yes. for the first time were majority minority. That's mm -hmm. right. The births, okay? So uh -huh. at the level of uh, between zero and one, more than <laughs> half of the population is now made up of non-whites, right? Uh, um, so clearly, again, this is an election where or, or you need to be more coalitional, or this is a country where you need to be more coalitional moving forward. Where's the opportunity? Immigration policy is the huge yes. opportunity for Republicans mm -hmm. to begin to show uh, 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 some movement towards the Latino vote. They had that opportunity under the Bush administration. Had Bush uh, uh, been able to pass immigration reform, he would have had a loyal uh, uh, cadre of Latinos with the Republican Party uh, 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 over a number of elections, mm -hmm. but they failed to do that. They missed that opportunity. I hope that the, Democra the Republican House, uh, 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 in its in its celery, in, 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 in its Tea Party infused uh, uh, stupor, doesn't make the mistake of passing on an opportunity they will have over the next two years 
to pass some meaningful immigration reform. And I am pretty sure that the Latinos in the Senate that were elected, Rubio, uh, Ted Cruz, the new senator, <laughs> are going to stake their political future on moving the Republican yes. Party towards a more sensible position on immigration policy. It's a huge opportunity on the short term, though on the long term it continues to accelerate the demographic trends towards more people. Across. Just one question. Your birth numbers between zero and one, doesn't that drive the yahoos further to the right? Doesn't it frighten them more that the, the, the electorate's getting darker, these aliens are taking over our You can country? fight diversity or you can embrace diversity. We've learned in this election that fighting diversity is not a winning formula. Right, okay. Exactly. And I was going to say, I think that it just means that there's going to be a huge fight within the Republican Correct. Party. Exactly. Civil war. There will be a civil war. But if they really do look at the results and they look at the exit polls, they will see it, in fact, on the immigration question and on things like the DREAM Act, you will see that, that in fact, most Americans, um, are, are, are not lining up with the, with the Republicans on well, those and, issues. And here's the great problem for the Republican Party is that this requires an absolute 180 degree mm -hmm. reversal from where right. they've been trending in the course of this election and particularly in the primaries. Uh, it's hard to imagine a more politically tone deaf uh, uh, exhibition than the primary debates in this election cycle. Um, and so this is a party that's really going to have to remake itself. Uh, I suspect that there are a number of value issues, the relatively softer value issues, uh, some of which may very much appeal to recent, recent immigrants uh, that they can begin to embrace. I think education becomes a huge issue. Mm -hmm. um, but this is going to require a very different look and feel from the Republican Party if they're going to be successful. And once again, their base is eroding. And, and I think it's it's true that it, on, on Bush got, a, you know, a much larger percentage the of, the, yeah. Yeah, of the Latino vote. And, and he, was, he was not perceived that, and he wasn't, in fact, anti-immigrant. And But we did see that when... Um, Rick Perry brought up, you know, when when the whole issue of immigration came up in the, in, you know, in the primary debates, you know, everybody well, jumped Perry, down his throat well, as as though, you know, oh my God, you're allowing, you're allowing immigrant right. children to go to to go to college. But, <laughs> but here's the case in point. I mean, he's a, he wins in a demographically Latino, big Latino state of Texas. Right. In order for Perry to win in the big demographic Latino state of Texas, which borders Mexico, mm -hmm. yeah. he cannot have radically anti-immigrant, radically exclusionary exactly. policies. Uh, uh, and, and, I, and I think that was a lesson that was not learned by, by the, the Boston uh, crowd and mm -hmm. was learned over four years ago by the Obama uh, uh, crowd. Right. And they were much more effective at building a much broader coalition. Even though with the Latino community, there's mixed feelings, right? Because there is a sense that Obama promised in 2008 he was yeah. going to do something about immigration in the first four years, and he quite didn't deliver. But uh, uh, I think uh, in the election four years ago, people voted for hope and change, and they were very optimistic. I think this election, the sense that I got in the community was somewhat different. It was more a vote of defense of gains uh, achieved over the last four years. It was a much more defensive vote. It was a much more, we cannot go back in time. So it turned out that forward, though it may not have been the message that resonated with the majority of the public, was particularly resonating with uh, minorities and, and groups of color. Uh, this whole message of we cannot turn the clock back. It means something very different for, for, for minority voters than, than it meant uh, for, the, for the white voters. So the, for the white voters, the message was change. For the minority voters, the message was forward. And it seems that the forward beat the change. Okay. Because the change felt the change backward. Okay. And, 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 and that was not a winning formula. So what? do we think that either a, a Rubio or even a Jeb Bush, or are there people who can be Republicans who, or maybe Cruz now, you know, that, that could I wouldn't can, think Cruz, but I think but Rubio and Bush have a really good the, chance. Yeah. You know. Rubio yeah. and Bush have a pretty decent chance of articulating a more sensible position mm -hmm. uh, and a position that would be more accepted by the Latino community. Right. They need to decubanize, if you will, because as we <laughs> learned from Florida, uh, 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 it is not just about the Latino vote, uh, it's not just about the Cuban vote, and the Latino Republican vote is not just about appealing to Cubans anymore, because right. there's not right. enough of them to make up the difference. So in Florida, we learned that it's about uh, Central Florida, and there were questions about what's going to happen in, in Central Florida and the Orlando area. Uh, one possibility was that the Puerto Ricans were going to go with Romney. The second was that they were going to stay home. And the third was that they were going to come for Obama. They came for Obama and they That's came right. big.
So the Latino vote in Florida is very different. Second South Florida, Miami-Dade, uh, uh, it's not an overwhelmingly Cuban county anymore. It's an right. overwhelmingly other Latino, yeah. uh, diverse Latino county. And those voters also turned for Obama. Under so Ram there's an opportunity uh, 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 for Republicans to appeal to those voters, but not if they continue to push the same exclusionary not policies right. they're doing, but, they're pushing now. But the bottom line is demographics is destiny. Right. Demographics is destiny. We're going to see a very different Texas that by the next election cycle, a very mm -hmm. different Arizona. These are going to be uh, presumptive Democratic states, again, unless you can make these Republican inroads. But that's also going to re require making a different Republican primary electorate. Yep. Uh, that yep. has to yep. change. Uh, and so that's now, true. in some respects, registration imperatives, which have always been central to the Democratic side of, uh, of this equation, uh, are going to become central to the Republican yep. side. Uh, but it will require sage and sober deliberation. It's not going to be a Tea Party moment of 2010, and like so many parties, the Republican Party clearly misread 2010 as a blueprint for yep. going forward, yep. uh, and it was instead a flashpoint of anger that drove one congressional election, not presidential politics. Right. And, That's and exactly it's partly right. not, uh, not understanding the difference between the, the electorate that comes out in a presidential year versus the electorate that oh, comes yes. out in the, in, in the midterm, midterm elections, which is often a sort of angry group that's voting against whoever is in, in, in power. I'd, I'd like to also get to the whole idea of, the, of women's oh, no, I, I and, wanted... and the gender gap. That was another thing in, as a pollster, the, the kinds of the, the things that people were saying about, oh, there's no ge gender gap anymore, or the, the, you know, the margin that, that, that somehow Romney was catching up among women. It's larger this year than it was in 08. They, they, uh, the Republicans did everything they could do to turn off women. And uh, you know, at, 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 at sort of at, at every level, and um, and they did turn off women. And and while people said that all those the issues of choice and and um, and and all the sort of quote women's issues weren't really important to women, yes, they were. Yes, they, <laughs> yes, they were. But if you look at the data, and and, uh -huh. and you know it. Romney won white women. So you, when you look at the woman's vote, you got to disaggregate. He won, what, 56% of white women? No, yes, but I mean, part of the, the, women, the women's vote is kind of interesting in, in that um, it's, it's split somewhat in, in terms of both age and marital status. Mm -hmm. Also, so if you're looking at single women or you're looking at younger women, now, now you have a different. A so different Romney won the married white women, but there's yeah. less of them as right, time exactly. goes by. Right, exactly. As time goes by, it's again, it's, <laughs> it's, it's older white, it, you know, older Excuse white, we, older white married you women. And my wife. I'm sorry. Oh, no. um, <laughs> can, can we talk for a moment about exactly how bad the Romney campaign was? Well, you you, you can know. talk for the next five minutes about it. Uh, uh, you know, just. Bad and stung by a string of bad luck, uh, uh, yeah. you know, absolutely from beginning to end. Uh, this, what we should have been talking about if he were a competent candidate today, would have been the last stand of the angry white men. Uh, and if he'd been a little bit more uh, uh, capable, that's what we'd have seen. If we hadn't seen Todd Aiken explode uh, in Missouri, if we hadn't seen uh, Richard Murdoch explode in Indiana, uh, we might have seen a different narrative. But. Every, at every point, it reinforces mm -hmm. issues uh, that are anathema to many voting women, uh, to the 45 percent of Obama's uh, uh, other than white support in this campaign. It's an absolutely remarkable blueprint for how not to go about it. He had a huge <laughs> uh, uh, opportunity that I think he himself recognized in the famous 47 percent video where he claimed that had he been uh, Hispanic, he would have had a better chance of winning the election. Uh, mm -hmm. The self-deportation line that he tried in one of the debates was Several. a line that uh, he oh, yeah. never uh. Uh, outlived, he could never erase. Right. To me, that counts as one of the larger gaffes of the election. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the policy behind it is understandable, but he used a very facile term that is very offensive to many. Uh, so he didn't take advantage of the advantages he potentially had. Later on, then, he was claiming his father was born in Mexico, and he was trying to kind of rewrite right. his Latino story. Right, right. exactly. Right. Uh, <laughs> but be, at that point, it was a paradox, or a parody of, of itself. Uh, had he tried that approach from earlier on, and a more conciliatory approach, uh, he may have still won the Republican primary because Perry actually self-destructed. Yes. Uh, it wasn't as big of a threat as I think they thought it was when they started attacking him on immigration. 
So they miscalculated mm -hmm. uh, bad, which then put him in a position in the general election of not being able to undo what he had done all throughout yeah. the primaries but the, the immigration issue. But the problem was that the base, the hardcore, never trusted Romney, never liked Romney. That was another yeah. huge problem. Huge, huge problem. problem. So and he, that's why he had attacked to the right, because they didn't, they didn't right. like him, they didn't trust and, and, him. And given his performance and in to, the election, they shouldn't have trusted him. And to be more rhetorically extreme in the primaries as a result. Yep. So that yep. it was harder and harder to back away from it, right. and it fed this image of a man with no convictions. Yep. And, and he felt, and for such a long time, he didn't even try to, ta you know, to track right. back to the, to, you know, to it's the, the center the greatest until the very yep. end. And, and because he was still trying to hold on to that to that he base doesn't... that he was afraid of somehow. Where were they going to go? I exactly. mean, why he exactly. was afraid well, of losing them, I, I can't. Because they hated I, Obama. I, I cannot imagine why he didn't try to go more Well, he only began earlier. trying in the second the debate. Well, that's the, well, the first. It was first too late. The, the if, if, if he had done first debate, uh, the day after the Democratic convention, oh, right. we would be talking about a different, different story. Obama right. deported about a million Hispanics in the four years he was in mm -hmm. power. That provided the Republicans, and that created a lot of anger in the Latino community, mm. and provided Republicans with a huge opportunity sure. to exploit that. By using the concept of self-deportation, he completely took that argument off the table, which made Republicans unable to mount a critique of Obama uh, in a way on, 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 the, on, the, on the middle left side of the immigration issue. It right. was not the most important issue. No. So they could have easily no, given that the up. Economy, education. Correct. It would have, it, they could have given that issue up for other uh, uh, right. positions. Okay, let's, let's turn to Obama. And he's still a president, again. What does he do? How does he approach the Congress? How does he approach the nation, given the divide that was shown in the election and the polling and everything else, and the, the, the utter you know, obstinacy of the Republicans? What can he do? strategically. He has to consistently remind people that there was an election and that that election did form a couple of choices. Now I don't necessarily assume that that's going to make a difference but we're going to see whether it has even the ghost of a chance right. with the lame duck session uh, coming up uh, today. Yeah. Um, yeah. That there are certain extremely important issues coming up, the fiscal cliff, oh. the sequestration being the biggest issue on the table Definitely. right now. Um, do we see a different negotiating posture out of the House uh, at this stage? Again, it's not the newly elected House, it's the old House. Right. Uh, but are they chastened in any way? Uh, and we'll see a lot about what the second term looks like uh, in November and They December. may be chastened, but are they angry and does the anger overcome any humility and defeat well, I think at there, the national level. You know, when we were saying there, there is going to be a problem within the Republican Party, because there are going to be the people mm -hmm. in the Republican Party who just think he's, he, wasn't, he wasn't conservative enough. Right. He wasn't one of the guys they, they really wanted, and, and one of those would have won, as opposed to seeing that, that if they look at, at the numbers, that in fact the, the very policies that they were talking about were not where the American people are, you know, and the, the idea of taxing people who make more than $250,000 is something the American people support, the majority of people support, and that, that you know, fighting that is not helping. And abortion them. rights. And, and abortion government support rights. for and education. Right. And immigration Immigration, reform, absolutely. And the DREAM Act, all of that. These are things that, in fact, we can see that most people, that the majority of, of not just Democrats, but independents as well, really want. And they're ju they just can't, you know, they can't have just a Tea Party party and expect to, to, to win. The, the, the best advantage that the Republicans have at this point is the Democrats in Congress. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. If, if the Democrats yes. in Congress could play this consistently to try to fo focus on exactly the issues and others that Mickey was just uh, referring to, that there is, in fact, it, it, it's a narrow, but there's a mandate and it goes across the board, and it's not about being insufficiently conservative. People don't want to go there. Uh, but Democrats have to find a way to talk about that consistently and powerfully, which they have been utterly Un unable to do uh, since at least November of 2010. Mm -hmm. but, uh, because somehow they bought into the idea that the country had moved yes. to the right yes. and wanted some of that. And, and they became afraid to talk about the, those issues because they, they somehow, again, they bought, the, you know, they drank the Kool-Aid. I'll be watching how <laughs> the, um, the Republicans in the Senate especially the Rubios and Cruces of this world, 
behave in the first six months around what I expect to be some kind of an immigration proposal that's going to be baked out of the White House and the, and the Democrats in the Senate. They're going to put that big chip on their table and say, okay, let's see how you're going to handle that one. If the Republicans are smart, they can deliver the number of votes they need in the House to pass such a project and explain sure. it to their uh, uh, constituents. Uh, uh, if they let pass on that opportunity, I think they're going to miss a huge uh -huh. chance right. to, to, to recapture some of the Latino vote that they've lost. It's incredible that after deporting a million Latinos over the last four years, the only demographic where Barack Obama gained significant ground over last time was the Latino vote. Right. That's, that shows a big heart and a, and, 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 and a big uh, uh, opportunity for the community. The community, in a way, gave him a pass for that and said, we want to watch you over the next four yeah. years. I also think that, that Hillary Clinton is going to be exercising some pressure on the president <laughs> to make sure that he delivers I, on I, that I, because I, I think her uh, uh, electoral I, chances are pretty much uh, 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 at stake. Uh, depending on what happens with the immigration reform issue. Well, One more yeah. comment, and then I've got a question oh, for okay. all of Okay, a, a couple of things. One thing that just occurs to me is that none of us brought up San the Hurricane Sandy and the fact that, A, it made the president look more presidential, B, it yeah, made him look like more bipartisan, you know, which, it, you know... My it, governor! Right, you're Hugging governor. the president, my <laughs> governor. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that that, I that really helped. And I, I think it, <laughs> and I think that it also reminded people of the role of government in their lives yep. and the need for yep. it. And this yep. whole idea that we, you know, privatize this, pri even privatize FEMA, but, you know, just somehow, you know, who needs government? The less government, the better. We don't need government until we really need government. Yeah, to which their own government doesn't work in a hurricane or in a huge crisis. <laughs> That's exactly it's right. Not right. Okay, we have 30 seconds. We're all teachers. What's one lesson that you could impart to your students about this election? What's one overarching lesson? Political lessons. Diversity and coalitions matter. Okay. Mickey. Actually, it's probably very similar. However, I would also try and get, I, because I tend to teach things that have to do with research and have to do with polling, um, and, and I, I think that trying to, n not buying into these people who say that, that it all doesn't matter, that it's not scientific, that the polls didn't work, don't pay any attention to them. Yes, they do. They're not all equal. Some polls are garbage, but there are good polls out there, and if you pay attention and you follow the, the, you know, the, the polls that are good methodologically, which includes all of the network polls, then in fact, um, you know, you won't go wrong. They are correct. Go ahead. Campaigns matter. I have one last word to Donald Trump. Shut up. <laughs> My thanks to my guests, David Birdsell, Hector Cadero Guzman, and Mickey Blum for pulling an all-nighter and sharing <laughs> their expertise with us. Thanks to you. To Dan. quote Sonny and Cher, the beat goes on here on CUNY TV. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Excellent yeah. job. Thank you, thank folks. You, thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.